This tutorial is going to show you how to connect Google Calendar or Microsoft Outlook Calendar into an existing database inside of Notion. It's not a two-way street. Any edits that you do with Notion afterwards are not going to translate back to Google or Outlook. So just keep that in mind. But what it does do is allow you to create an event in the native app, which could be Google Calendar on your phone or whatever, and it'll automatically send it to Notion in about five minutes. There's about a five minute delay. Before this API update came out about a week ago, you were able to embed a Google Calendar inside of your Notion page, which is great, except that you it's read only. So you can't click any of the days and add events. After this is all set up, you can still use this, but then also get a drop down using a custom filter that you'll set. And then you'll be able to just see your Google Calendar events inside of Notion. So I'm gonna show you how to get that going. Here we go. There's two ways to do this. You can use Zapier or you can use Automate IO. And I've been using both of these. They're both very similar. So I'm gonna show you how to use either one. All right, so I'm already logged into Zapier and I haven't made any zaps or anything because I'm gonna to need to do some work first. So for Zapier, how to get this connected, it's gonna be three steps. Three steps to get everything integrated and working smoothly for you. So the first step is to go to settings and members. You're gonna to go to integrations and nothing's gonna be here yet, but that's why you're gonna select develop your own integrations. Select new integration. I'm just gonna call this something really simple like Zapier and I'm gonna hit submit to my associated workspace. Yours may be different. And all that I'm gonna change on this page or all I'm gonna do on this page is show and copy this integration token. I'm gonna to keep everything else as it is. I hit save. I can actually close this window. Now, nothing updated here, but if I click off this, go to settings and members, and then I wanna to go to integrations, and then I see it. And if I were to have gotten busy, gotten sidetracked, and I needed to get that token again, I just go back to this page, select the three dots, and I can copy this once again. There it is, copy token. All right, so that's important because when I go to my Zapier test page, I need to first allow this to be shareable. Otherwise, when I go to Zapier, it's not gonna know what to look for. So I hit share. Integrations is now here as of recent. So select anything in this box. This pop-up window appears and you can select the integration. So now that we're back here in Zapier, we're gonna make a new Zap. And I wanna select Google Calendar for this one. And I want the trigger to be new or, or updated event. Continue. It's gonna ask me to select my account, which I'll do and hit continue again. It's gonna ask me for the calendar I want to be adding this to or adding this from. Hey, continue, and we're gonna test the trigger. Now it needs an action. So it has the trigger, Google Calendar. The action is going to be Notion. Choose an event. We want to create a database item. Hit continue. Choose an account, select Notion. You may need to reconnect it here that token that I copied already, I'm gonna paste right here, hit continue. There we go. Now, because I shared that page, it shows up right here. Select this and these fields, if you're following along with me and yours looks different, it's because you really, when you create this page, I should have said this before, when you create this page, you need to give it some names kind of based off of how calendar events work. So that's why I have a meeting name, a date, description, location, people. Now this tag, this tag is going to allow me to automatically set this with each trigger. So when an event gets added to this page, it's gonna automatically have this Google Calendar tag. Okay, now that I've shown you how the fields work and you understand why you're seeing these on my screen. The meeting name is going to be the summary. The date is going to be, you know, just type in begins. And there's two different types. There's a pretty version and then there's a not so pretty version. It's up to you, but I'm going to select the pretty version. And the people. Now this one here, we are going to 
select attendees email. This way, it doesn't matter if they responded or not. I just shows all the emails that I invited people into this event with. The location is no surprise location. And the tag, what I just talked about, Google Calendar. This means it's going to automatically set this tag for me. The description. Now this description is going to be called description. Perfect. And the content, I've just left that blank. Test and continue. Do you see how we just showed up? Now, when you actually create events, again, it's gonna be like a five minute delay, but when you're doing this testing phase, it shows up very fast. You see it has my email here because I invited myself to this event. Uh, I have an address. I have a description. It's, it's fantastic. So not a two-way street, but you can see how it works. Now let's get into how to add an Outlook calendar from Zapier. So for Outlook, we're going to do essentially the same thing. We've already gone to settings and members. We've already added this Zapier integration, and that was done by selecting this. So we have the same exact names that I previously just showed you with this particular calendar set. Before we do anything, let's make sure we select this share integrations and select Zapier again. Hit invite. Because if we don't do that, that means when we go to Zapier, here to create a zap, it's not going to be able to identify the page. So this time we're going to be using Outlook. With Zapier, there is a new calendar event. With Automate IO, there's going to be a new or updated calendar event at the time of this recording. It's not like it communicates both ways. Hit continue. It needs me to verify the email I'm sending this from. It needs me to verify the calendar. And then we're going to do another test trigger. And I'm going to hit continue. We're going to select Notion for the app. We're going to do the create database item. Select continue. We're going to go to the account and select the Notion account. And the database, we just shared this. We want to do the Outlook calendar test. And these are going to be similar fields. So for the meeting name, I want to actually go with the subject. For the date, let's type in start date time and we need to give it some kind of a some kind of numbers to it because i tried this one before and it didn't work so for the people what i want to do on this one is i want to select the attendees email address names perfect the location is going to be the location display name and the tag this time is going to be Outlook Calendar. And the description is going to be this body preview. And hit continue. Let me go over here and show you. There, it just popped up. So everything came in. Now, unfortunately, what happens sometimes when you trigger these events and they turn into actions and then they go to the Notion database page? Sometimes what happens is the day of the time of it, at least, it just doesn't, it's just not configured correctly. So I initially set this to be at 1 p.m., but it's showing up at 5 p.m. That could cause me some big problems. So going back into my Notion apps, I need to do one minor thing and make sure that this does not happen for future events. So what I'm going to do, it's that my event was at 1, it put it at 5. So I need to say minus four hours and hit continue and let's retest this now it's showing up at the right time at 1 p.m. I just ignore the UTC is not perfect and that's how you connect Outlook with Zapier so now I'm going to get into how to do automate IO with Google let's get into this for integrations we've only have Zapier currently selected I'm going to keep this blank right now so I'm going to go to Automate IO first this time. I'm going to create a bot. I want Google Calendar. 
This time I want to say triggers an event that's created or modified. Under calendar, we need to select the correct calendar. And then for the app, I want to do a brand new one. So I have all these test notion icons showing up. I just want to do a new one. And this time I'm going to select the page. This is basically doing all the work for me. I don't have to do this first in Notion when I use Automate IO, unlike Zapier, where I had to do these first two steps, adding it, the integration under settings, and then sharing the page manually. With Automate IO, I've done both of those steps now just using their interface. So let's select the page I want to share this with so it's integrated. And I'll do this Automate Calendar test page, allow access save. So what I want to do now, you know, I just want to have this thing add a new database item. It's not a two way communication. And I am using the free plans for all these, by the way. Um, I'm just going to have it be super simple, add a database item, the database. Well, what we just added this Google Calendar test page. Now for the start date, you don't want to type anything in here because it's not going to work. You want to instead hit this plus button. So for this case, the start date is going to be event begins. The end date is ends. Under people, when you invite people via their email addresses, they're not going to have enough time between when you create the event to agree to it or disagree to it. So a way to get around all that is just to say not responded guest emails. That way, at least they show up. The location is going to be the location. And this tag from Google Calendar, this comes from a field that I already created inside of what I'm going to be using to connect new events from Google to be placed into. And so I have this tag already created called Google Calendar. So that's the reason why you're seeing under Automate IO, that's the reason why you see this tag field with a Google Calendar showing up. So you definitely want to select that for this. And the description, that looks good. And the name is going to be the event summary. That is it. So let's hit save. Let's turn the bot on. Now it wants me to perform an event modify. But remember, this is going to also work when you create a new event. Let's go into the Google Calendar. Again, I'm going to test this. And we'll make it at 4 o'clock. Hit save. All right, so now it's at 4 p.m. Let's go back here. I'm done. And then it showed up right there. However, I have to definitely mention this. If you notice that these times weren't showing up correctly, so let's go back to Automate IO, edit the bot list, and we are going to say we're going to save it. Going back to this event modified, I'm going to say I'm done. And there it is, event modified two at 4 p.m. We have one more thing to do, and that's going to be how to connect Automate IO with Microsoft Outlook Calendar and have that talk to a Notion database. So what we're going to do is create a bot. I'm inside Automate IO. And if this is the first thing you're watching in this tutorial, um, I have not done anything inside of Notion at this point, except create a previously existing page that has some of these fields here, including a tag that has a pre-filled Microsoft Outlook already there. So going back to Automate IO, create a bot. I want to select Outlook this time. So for Outlook, just like in Google, we have the option to have a new page item created inside of a database when it's added or updated. So I'm going to select that option. I'm going to select the right calendar. And then for my app, we're going to need to do, ignore all this stuff here. I'm going to just do a search for Notion. And let's call this one Outlook, Authorize. Click on Save. And what we want to do is just the add database item, the exact same thing we did for Google Calendar. So when it comes to Notion, there's no way for it to talk back to Outlook again. 
um, or with Google. So what we have to do is just have it add a database item. The update field here doesn't talk back and it doesn't work either when there's something new created so or when nothing is already there. So we have to do the add database item. Now with Automate IO, I've, I've noticed this when it comes to the Outlook portion of it at least, I don't see it show up here. So I'm gonna go back to my Outlook calendar test for Automate and I'm gonna make sure that I share this with Automate first. Hit invite, let's refresh the page, which is gonna have me create the whole thing over again. So we're gonna do Outlook again, updated calendar event, calendar, calendar, that's what mine's called. And then the app, let's select this one that we created called Notion Outlook. And let's see if it gives us any problems when we add a database item. And now it shows up. So a little weird, but just so you know, some troubleshooting, you gotta get it to show up, otherwise this is not gonna work. And this is gonna be similar to how we set it up with Zapier. So for the start date, what we wanna do is just simply type in event start time. Maybe here I'll do end date time. Now, before I did this test, I noticed that my times were four hours off, which is unfortunately just happening right now with the way that it's integrating. But you can fix that if you do this code. And yours may be different amount of time off, maybe depending on what time zone you're in. But for me, I had to type this in minus four hours. Now, for me, I had to do this minus four H code, which I found right here. Say that you're plus four hours, you're gonna to wanna to do a plus instead of a minus. I'm gonna keep mine both like that. And now the people, we want to call this one all attendees names. The location's going to be, the location's going to be the location display name. And this tag is going to be Outlook Calendar. The description is the body preview and the meeting name is the event subject. And remember, these fields here are showing up because I've created them here. Let's hit save. Let's turn it on. Let's do another updated calendar event. So I have this test event here for at one, and I'm gonna make this now at two. And let's hit send and save this up. Select I'm done. And it's gonna check for the updated calendar event. Going back here, you'll see that my test event showed up and it is indeed at 2 p.m. So that minus four hours there thankfully is ways to counteract that when you set it up so that moving forward, when a new event is created, it's just gonna work. And last but not least, when you do create events, don't freak out if they don't immediately come over to Notion. It's gonna take about five-ish minutes for that to carry over. So hopefully this video was useful for you. Give this video a like if you liked it. I'm gonna try to put more Notion videos out there in the near future. So that's my tutorial. Thanks for checking this out. I hope you got a lot of use out of this. If you have any questions, write them in the comments. If you like the video, give it a like. I'll see you for the next one.